Okay, so, um, yesterday I did one of these, and I figured I might as well do another one, you know. I'm going to try to keep it short, I don't have a lot of time. But today I went walking, like I said I would, I promised I'd exercise, and I really committed myself to it. I went, I went from the house that I live at, to the f- gas closest gas station, which is not very close. It's about six miles away, at least with the roads I took. The road, I took two different roads that went for three miles each. So I went six miles there and six miles back, and all I got was a vitamin water, you know? And everyone just looked at me like I was a freak. I was kind of... I don't know, it's kind of weird to see when someone's trying to do good for themselves, everyone's worried. They're so wrapped up, they're the number one priority in their head. But I made it like a a, a big priority for me to say hi to every person I came across, you know, and wave at everyone that drove past that was on my side, you know. That made me feel good. At least when they wave back, some of them would give you a really concerned look. I even made it a priority to talk to all the animals when I walked past, you know, because there's plenty of farmland. You know, horses and goats and sheep, chickens, cows, all sorts of wonderful animals. And I just say hi to them as I walk past and... Tell them to have a good day. Keep being awesome. And I'm going to try to eat less of them. This is, you know. You got to put it somewhere in the world. You know, and that's why I have this here too. So I can reiterate it and make it a part of me. So I can set the future, you know. And I was just thinking about what I was doing. Because when I upload the first one, you have to pick a type of video. And... I th- I think really the most honest thing would have been to choose people in blogs or whatever, but I chose educational because when I thought of it, I want to, I want to, I don't want to teach anyone anything because I don't have anything more than you do. That's the illusion is we're all just as mindless this whole world is just mathematical concepts, and I don't understand math a lick. Some people know more, but we're all fucked, you know? So, I'm not here to teach you, but I, I'm here to learn. And I think that when I learn, I notice that if I try to talk to people about certain things or get other people interested in learning most of them aren't and I want to just take these ideas and I want to try to exit the small talk realm and I want to build for other people to start thinking not we all think all day but it's nonsense real thoughts you know what what's really important dissecting how you live you know meditating is a big thing because the absence of thought you know because even if you meditate and you're not doing a good job you're not thinking about anything important you know so taking a break of nagging and just trying to let go in this temporary moment you give yourself a a presence, and then when you return, it makes everything so much easier, and it flows so much better, and I realized after I went walking, it was a very similar thing, I walked for almost three hours, 12 miles, and the whole time I was there, but it didn't feel like three hours, it also didn't feel like an hour, you know, it didn't, I didn't feel like anything because there's no real recollection of it. You know, you remember it, but 
when you're there, you're there. Before, you can't plan it out. After, you can't change it or really mem- remember the true details of everything. Like when you're there, so you just have to be there. Now, I do remember thinking that I was going to plan it out. And I was going to run. And I ran a little bit. I made sure to run every other phone line. But after my feet started blistering, I couldn't do that anymore. (laughs) That was a good distance, though. And also, when I walked on the main road, I didn't want to run into someone's car. So I didn't run very much, but I did as much as I can, you know, what I should do. And I thought I was going to run the whole thing or something like that, like like I'd ever be able to do that, first off. And then I totally underestimated the distance once I started going. I'd go, oh, I just got to the halfway point. And I'd check my phone and look at it. Is someone going to... That's not gonna happen, and I felt good, because I learned today, I learned really how far it is, and how much time it would take me to walk that distance, and I'm gonna do it again tomorrow, to see what it takes me to do that, and I hope that's not a problem for me, I don't think it should be, but There's something to be said in sowing your seed, you know. You're planting and you're waiting for growth. You know, when you plant something, it doesn't grow right away. But you got to be consistent with it and keep watering it. Make sure that there's always sunlight on it. You know. And obviously you shut down, but that's, that's me saying you have to put effort in. You know, you got your sunshine is your your effort to grow. And oddly enough, the effort it takes is to quit forcing it. Because if you're forcing it, it's not going to do better for you. And I think that's why I had a good time. Because I didn't have to force anything. You know, there were parts that I didn't want to do, but I I didn't have to force myself to finish because... I had to finish. It wasn't me forcing myself. I had to be home. I wasn't just going to lay there the rest of the day or something. Oh, I'm in pain. But it was challenging, but I didn't have to force myself at all. I didn't have to make the effort because I was committed already. And you know what you're committed to. You feel it when you do it. So... You have to live that. And I'm even questioning now as I make this, am I really going to upload this? You know, you have doubt in your head all the time, but you got to go, yes, I'm really going to do this because I want to do it. You know, oh, I got to make a picture and put it. It's so easy. It's no real effort. And this part that I'm doing, it's the same thing as the walking. It's so therapeutic and easy for me to actually just do it and get it done with you know and it's not in a bad way but in a way where I have to let out what I'm feeling so what I've felt today is that you gotta do stuff you don't want to do that's hard in the moment and you're wrong when you start. And that's how you know you're hard. It's hard. But if you're wrong, you're going to be right if you keep going. It doesn't mean that you're perfect or you know the answers. It means that you did the right thing. Being wrong, you you went forward and said, well, I was wrong, but maybe I can get a better idea. You know? When I came home, even to, uh, you know, add to it after I got the goat heads out of my shoes, I decided I was going to take a cold shower because it's not easy to take a cold shower. And you get it done quick and you hate doing it, but as soon as you get out of the shower, 
it just feels so easy to not be in the shower. And if you think about every other time you've ever been in the shower, what did you do? You had the water on and it was warm and you sat there and you probably spent way too much time in there just wasting water. Probably not washing yourself for half the time you're in there. Just Some of you are probably masturbating in the shower. Which, if you do, clean that up. If you share the shower. And even if you don't, come on, man. But, either way. <laughs> I digress. You're comfortable. And you create more comfort for yourself there. And you think you're smart when you're in the shower. And you have these great ideas. You also think you can sing when you're in the shower. You turn it on cold and you just start thinking, Oh, I'm so pathetic. I have so much more to do. And I don't want to live my life like the the, the people in Wally or something where I'm just sitting around. Going, you know, this feels good. I'm just going to die anyway. And you got to think about it for what it really is all, all together. And then once, you know, once they quit telling your story or whatever. You had to go somewhere. You couldn't... If if you just stayed the same the whole time, you didn't live right. You know, you need to live in a way where your future is bright. And you're going to have rough periods where it's going to seem like it's, uh, you know, it's harming you. But it's not harming you. It's It's, it's weathering you. You know, so you can grow again stronger. And it's not the what doesn't kill you just makes you stronger. T- yes, everything should make you stronger unless you, y- you've you chosen to just be comfortable there. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff that won't kill you that definitely doesn't make you stronger, you know. Water doesn't kill you, but it doesn't make you stronger. It's ridiculous. It'll keep you where you need to be. And there's certain things humans need to be kept where they're at. Other things they don't. Your happiness is not a guarantee. You have this unreasonable idea that you're always going to be happy. And I know you do because I do. And I see you. You you care about yourself so much because you want to be happy. Or you want to be good. At least whatever that means. Successful. But you're, if you're taking the easy way out every time. Eventually after so many times doing that. You always take the easy way out. And some people, it's so bad that they literally take the easy way out. They just leave the earth of their own will. You know? Because they they gave themselves that choice. And they you can fall back on it every single time. You know? And I started thinking today about the first lie I'd ever told. While I was walking, I remembered. And it, and maybe it wasn't the very first lie, but it's the first cognitive lie I can remember really caring about and still trying to hold to this day or something like that. We all tell white lies that you don't care if someone finds out. I mean, that's human nature. It's just speech. But, but there's a, a, a point where you allow yourself to to fall apart your integrity and, and your will and it was uh this kid that lived across the street from me and i'm going to talk about him in depth sometime and it wasn't the street it was the street behind me but it was in my backyard and we had this ditch that ran through and over behind the ditch, you know, and he had a fence. His backyard was right there. So we had adjacent backyards. And we started hanging out. And 
he was just a horrible influence on me. Probably the worst of all of them I've ever had. And he, we were, uh, I don't remember everything that we did, but I do remember what I lied about. And we had rocks in these uh, vacuum attachment tubes. And we were flinging them onto his neighbor's roof, you know, having su- like just silly childish fun. The kind that you really can't repeat now with anything like that. Except for maybe walking, I don't know, that was pr- pretty good for me. <laughs> and we had, <laughs> we're throwing these rocks and eventually we hear, and then we look and his neighbor, this lady, and I'll always remember what she looked like. She was this Hispanic lady. She had like dark black hair and it was in a you know I don't know the name of the type of braid it was in but you know just a sloppy kind of braid and she was wearing a black tank top and just some blue jeans she wasn't a heavy lady but she was American you know for certain she she had made her way to America and eaten her her gray food and she, not great food, but our food that <laughs> makes people look how they do. And she uh, came over, she started yelling at us, which one of you little fuckers broke my window? You know, and I looked over and he was gone. So, in my mind... When we got in trouble, I told my parents when they asked me, and I said, I didn't do it. They grounded me anyway, but it wasn't a real grounding. I told them that I didn't do it. And I don't know if I did break the window, but I definitely was throwing rocks. And to this day, I, I can't remember who really broke the window because I did that. Because I I tied that into this movie I made in my head of who I was. That I was going to let everyone see. And you can only do that so long before it lives in you. And it's in your eyes. And people can see it. You know. You need to let that out. And I just, I remembered the bitterness of that. And I thought, you know. I really got to gotta talk about this because th- this is a big part of everyone's behavior and we all could fix it and some of us have and some of the greatest people did and a lot of those people are gone right now because of what they did, you know. People that weren't willing to lie about who they were, you know, and they... They were always present as themselves. I think the most recent person that I think we could point at that we have good video footage of at least would be Tupac. He he was just the most honest to his heart man. And he had so much energy and was there as him. He knew who he was. He didn't... He had overcome what he, what he had gone through. And I think that's what the story of Jesus is meant to tell us. And it's exaggerated in the abstract ways that it is to point that out to us. And I'm glad I'm coming to these realizations. And I hope that they're at least somewhat true in my near future. There I go thinking about that again. But... You know, I hope I can hold on to these ideas and that they keep serving me well. Oh yeah, I watched another episode of Breaking Bad because, oh my god, two actually, two of them this time. Amazing show. And I think I'll watch some South Park. Um, I've been reading a little bit. Not <laughs> very lot. I'm not a... In, intelligent person in the slightest been writing I wrote today more than I have in a while because I've just been torn 
mentally, I don't know, spiritually. And that made me feel good. Um, I'd say listen to people who don't want anything from you. You know, if they, people that want to give you something usually have your interest in heart somewhat, or at least help you not be dysfunctional. Maybe not give you anything, because you can't expect people to make you something. But people that are at least willing to not disrespect you over themselves are really who you need to be around. And I think a lot of us are going to start acting better because of this pandemic that's been going on of COVID or whatever. I hope. I mean, most of the people I saw today were going about their lives like normal. Not scared, you know, of people. I mean, there's precautions going on, but nobody's terrified, you know. I think that's probably where we need to be. And, yeah, I'm going to take another walk tomorrow. I got a, an alarm set to get up. I'm going to do it as soon as I get up. Maybe I'll have to do my laundry first, move my laundry over. Hopefully my mom will have taken the stuff out of the dryer because you know, I don't want to go through her, her stuff. But, yeah, you know, let's hope tomorrow is as good of a day as... Today was. And. I don't know. Probably shouldn't be thinking so much about tomorrow's. But. We're here anyway. So. Love myself. And love all of you. If you may be listening right now. Thank you. You know me better than anyone ever has right now. Because you're here. So. Yeah. Get to know yourself too. And I'm trying to help you. Be honest. And I'll see you tomorrow.